Hello again, Knights fans, and welcome to the third edition of the 2016 FDU Knights Baseball Roundup. I'm Ty Mead here with head coach Gary Puccio. Coach, you played UMES two weeks ago. You had this past weekend off, so you took a little special trip with your team. What did you do on Saturday? Yeah, right. Uh, Saturday we went up to Central Connecticut, your old home stomping grounds, and uh, supported our basketball team as they played Central in uh, a game that meant second place for them. And the, the guys did a great job rooting them on. and. And we're very happy that our basketball team won, playing a home game on Wednesday night. And I know that all 30 of our players plan to be there to support them. All right, great. Let's look at that UMES series. Obviously a team from Maryland. They were outside a little bit more than you were leading up to it. Great weather in South Carolina. Three games set. You dropped the first two, one on Sunday. The first game on Friday was a 5-1 to one setback. What would you see out of your team in that game? You know, that, that game going in the ninth, we were down 2-1 in the ninth. We made three errors in the ninth. Ended up with six errors in the infield, which is unlike us at all. And, you know, a part of that's coming out of the gym, obviously. And it just kind of bothered me how we played. Also, offensively, we had men on base every inning. I mean, we, we left 15 men on base and ended up losing 5-1 to three errors in the ninth. Cost us a few more runs. And I wasn't happy with the performance. But at the same time, I guess coming out of the gym, I don't know how much I could expect. But... It was not the way I wanted to get started, that's for sure. All right, as we move on to Saturday, a 6-4 to four loss, another close game deep into the game. What would you see on Saturday? Yeah, Saturday we start to uh, – Corey Zeller started for us freshman. I thought he threw four good innings, five – four good innings. And uh, Chris Cashman came in behind him, and he threw three strong innings as well. Chris threw uh, one bad pitch. He hung a, hung a changeup or a curve. I don't remember which. They got hit out of park for two-run homer. It was the only hit he gave up. Uh, Corey pitched extremely well as well. So, and we came back in that game. We were down. We came back and tied it at 4-4. I brought in uh, Ryan McDonald in the bottom of the eighth. You know, kind of like bringing in Ryan McDonald the way I did back in 2014. Unfortunately, he was out all last season in 2015 with uh, Tommy John surgery. So it wasn't the smartest time to bring him in in a 4-4 tie bottom of the eighth. Kind of like my mind was the Ryan McDonald of 14 and not realizing he hadn't pitched in a little over a year. So so I got to take the uh, blame for that loss, that's for sure. Now, Sunday morning, you played a 10 a.m. game. You won 7-5. to five. Always good to get a victory before a long bus ride home. What did you see out of your team? Yeah, we're going to try to play 8 a.m. games, too, just to lull the other team to sleep because that seemed to work on Sunday. Um, obviously, Logan pitched Sunday through five strong innings. Uh, he left with a lead. We uh, got great relief pitching out of Danny Demetrops. He threw a double play ball that we booted that would have kept Logan as the uh, pitcher record. But we booted the ball, made, tied the game at 4-4. Danny came right back and got them out. Uh, we scored two to take a lead. He gave up a solo homer the next inning and then just shut him down right then and there. And uh, Ryan Brennan picked up the save in the last inning. It was a, a well-played game by us. It was Each day we played better, and I guess that's what you look for at this time of year that's early. I'm disappointed at the end result being uh, one and two, but I was happy that we played better and better. Can we focus in a little bit on the pitching staff? Obviously, Logan Fratty, he threw five innings. Normally, as you get later in the season, you're going to expect him to go deeper into games, but early on, obviously, you're watching pitch counts and things like that. No earned runs. You mentioned Danny Demetrops, great relief in two of the, four, uh, two of the three games. What would you see out of your bullpen in these games? Yeah, and what you just said is very true. Like Joe Flack threw the first game. He threw five good innings. But all our starters left after five. Nobody, Corey went four, and the other two went five. So, you know, obviously deeper in the season, your starters are going to give you a lot longer. None of those guys gave up over two runs. And like you said, Logan's weren't even earned. So, yeah, I thought, I thought the bullpen, Danny did a real nice job for us coming out of bullpen. I was very happy with him. Uh, Ryan Brennan closing on Sunday, did a nice job. You know, Timmy Quinn pitched well the ninth inning, the first game. Again, you know, he had to get like seven outs in that inning because of the defensive mistakes we made. He should have been in the dugout at two to one. Uh, it was a ground ball we booted. It would have been the third out of the inning with no run scoring. So overall, you know, we're young. The, the pitching's young. That's one of our issues, and that's one of the things we're going to have to see them develop and, and make sure that, you know, they're not walking eight and nine hitters and doing a couple of things that we just don't believe in. Uh, Danny gave up a home run on an 0-2 pitch. You know, things like that, that that you know we stress here that shouldn't happen. So I thought they did very well considering coming out of the gym. I, I was probably more impressed with the pitching than anything else. One of the things that you've always been very secure in here is your bullpen. You had three guys that all graduated last year that were basically guys you went to every single game. One of the things I noticed from this weekend is outside of Flack and Fratty, the other pitchers that you used did not pitch at all last season and some had never pitched for you before. 
in all your years of coaching, have you ever ever had a situation where you had so many guys that you were seeing in game action for the first time? Yeah, I mean, what, we got nine new pitches this year out of the 13 on the roster. I mean, that's a lot, and that's asking a lot. But the argument to that is you only need a few of them to do well. If three or four of them step up and do well, you're in good shape because we still got Flag and Fratty and, and Chalooper coming back. And, you know, that helps that we got at least three guys that we and Ryan McDonald. So we got guys coming back that we can count on. But, yeah, some of these guys are going to have to step up. They're going to get the opportunity, and they got to show they can do it. And, and so far, so good. I mean, no, nobody's pitched themselves out of play, and every single one of them has gone out there and given us a very respectable performance. As we get more of that and as our stars go further into the games, I think that's good signs ahead. Let's talk about the offense a little bit. Bobby Romano was moved up from the bottom of the batting order where he was most of the year as a freshman was hitting in the top to the middle of the lineup during this weekend and produced pretty well for you in all three games. And also, freshman catcher, designated hitter Evan McDonald had a great weekend. What did you see out of those guys? Well, Bobby's first game was a rough game. He hit in the three spot, and twice he got up with uh, first and third, less than two out, and struck out both times in those spots. So, you know, he's a sophomore, and I think he's going to be a phenomenal hitter as time goes on. But I just thought it was a little too much pressure putting him in that spot as a sophomore. So I dropped him down to sixth. And he ended up leading the team and hitting for the weekend. So, uh, you know, I just want him to be comfortable. I felt he put a little too much pressure on himself in the hitting in the three spot. Evan McDonald obviously just has started like a ton of fire. He, uh, we had a strikeout throw him out with him catching in uh, game two. And and I think he homered and doubled already. So, he's shown he can hit the ball. He's going to be a good one. No ifs, ands, or buts. Before we look ahead to Longwood Lancers, who you're playing this weekend down in Virginia, we're going to have the – Alumni question of the week. It's back. First one of the year. And it's from Red McGarry this week. And he asks about the home opener, which is next Wednesday, the 9th, against St. John's, if there are any special plans for the home opener. You know, we actually are working on a couple of uh, pr a promo, but it's, it's still in the early stages. But I'm trying to work on uh, some free food for uh, students and stuff. But it's, it's still in the making, and hopefully we'll get that done. But obviously home opener against St. John's. You know, we're going to play Longwood this week. They're a big South team. We're certainly not shying away from any of the heavyweights. That's for damn sure. So uh, we got gorgeous stands now. So hopefully we'll get a pretty good student crowd. I, I looked at the uh, projected forecast. I know it's a week from now, but they're saying it's going to be 64 degrees that day. So we're looking to have a big turnout here at the Namoli Family Complex for opening day against St. John's. As we look ahead to the Longwood Lancers, they actually played a series against one of our NEC rivals. The Wagner Seahawks were down there this past weekend. Longwood went 2-1 and one in that series. Overall, what are your impressions of that team? Yeah, Longwood, you know, like I said, they're a big South team. Uh, they, they are very well coached. They they hit the ball well, keep put the ball, play a lot. Not tremendous power, but enough power in the lineup to supply. Uh, I think they average about six runs a game so far this year. And, and their pitching is strong. They, they definitely throw a lot of strikes. I know the first guy shut out Wagner. And uh, threw a lot of mixed his pitch as well. So it, 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 this is going to be an uphill fight for the three games over the weekend. I mean, I want us to be competitive. And the thing I told our guys is, again, based on the first weekend, just keep playing better. You know, what counts is the league. No one gets out large bids in the Northeast. So what counts is being ready for the conference, having knowing who's playing where, knowing, like you said, with all those pitches, who's going to be in what roles. None of that's been determined yet, you know. I mean, a pretty funny story during the game uh, last weekend. Jason Fatzinger reached on a walk, and Shane was in the on-deck circle, and I was in the dugout right under him, and Shane turned to me and said, are we going to run with, for Jason? And I said, well, let's see, Shane. we got a lead right now. we got a two-run lead, so we want the best defensive kid out there. So is that Jason? Is that CJ? Is that Craig? Who, who should be out there? And Shane looked at me, and he says, I don't really know. And I turned to Shane and said, I don't really know either. That's the point. We, you know, it was too early in the season. we got a lot of new guys. Ten games from now, we need to know, and that's what the next couple of weeks are about. As we move forward here, obviously you're a little bit disappointed with some of the performances that your team had last weekend. What's your message been to them heading into this week's games? I, you know, the biggest, I don't know if it's a gripe, but the biggest issue I've had so far is there's a fine line between confidence and overconfidence. We're coming off a of playoff season. We got eight of the nine returning position players back. We got three starting pitchers back. So I expect them to be confident and feel that they have a legitimate shot to get there. But at the same time, I reminded them that the reason we got there last year, we had our back against the wall like four or five times, and we played hard and we played well. 
And I don't think we necessarily did either of those two things the first weekend. So it was reminding them that, you know, yeah, it's great to want to be a playoff team, but how about doing the work it takes to be there? And that's what we have to get back to. All right, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Good luck this weekend at Longwood. You also have a game on Tuesday against Lafayette and then the home opener against Big East member St. John's here at the Namoli Family Baseball Complex on Wednesday. So we'll catch up with you at some point early next week. For all the fans out there, you can keep up with all the action on FDUnites.com.